The Religion of Islam presented by the Quran and Sunnah Part 6. 5. The Pillars of Faith. As we are now aware that the pillars of Islam are its apparent rituals that a Muslim should accept and perform to indicate his acceptance of Islam. We should also know that there are other pillars pertaining to the heart, in which a Muslim should believe in order for his Islam to be sound. They are called the pillars of faith. The greater they are in a Muslim's heart, the higher he goes up the ranks of faith and the worthier he becomes of being one of the believing servants of Allah. A degree higher than that of being a mere Muslim. Every believer is a Muslim, but not every Muslim has reached the degree of believers. He certainly has the basis of faith, but he may not possess perfect faith. The pillars of faith are six. It is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day, and destiny, the pleasant and unpleasant aspects thereof. First pillar, belief in Allah, and as a result one's heart gets filled with love and reverence for Allah Almighty, with humility and submission towards him, and with obedience to his commands alone. With no partner. Likewise, one's heart becomes full of fear from Allah and hope for his mercy and reward. Thus, one becomes from the pious servants of Allah who adhere to his straight path. Second pillar, belief in the angels. That they are servants of Allah who were created from light, that they are in the heavens and the earth, and are great in number that none can count them except for Allah. And that they are innately disposed to engage in worship, decree and glorification of Allah. They glorify him day and night tirelessly, who never disobey whatever Allah commands and do whatever they are commanded. Surah Tareem. 6. Each angel has his special task for which Allah Almighty created him. Some of them are entrusted with bearing the throne, some with taking out souls, and some with bringing down the divine revelation from heaven, which is the task of Gabriel, peace be upon him. The best among them all, in addition to the keepers of paradise and hell. There are other angels who love the believers and frequently supplicate Allah and ask forgiveness for them. Third pillar, belief in the books revealed by Allah. A Muslim believes that Allah Almighty revealed books to whomever he wills from his messengers, containing true information and just commands from him. This includes the belief that Allah revealed the Torah to Moses, the Gospel to Jesus, the Psalms to David, and the scrolls to Abraham. And that these books no longer exist today in the way they were originally revealed. The Muslim also believes that Allah revealed the Quran to the final prophet, Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. That its verses were sent down successively over a period of 23 years. And that Allah has preserved it from distortions and alterations, I alone revealed this Quran to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Quran from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered. Surah Al-Hijjah, 9. Fourth Pillar, Belief in the Messengers. We have already talked about this in detail. Prophets were sent to all nations throughout history, calling people to one religion and one God who is the only deity worthy of worship, and warning them of disbelief, polytheism, and disobedience to Allah. O Messenger, I have sent you with the truth in which there is no doubt. To give good news to the believers of the generous reward he has prepared for them and to warn the disbelievers of the painful punishment he has prepared for them. And there is no nation from the previous nations except that there passed in them a messenger from Allah to warn them of his punishment. Surat Fatiha, 24. They were humans, just like other people, who were chosen by Allah to convey his message. I have sent revelation to you, O Messenger, as I had sent revelation to the prophets before you. This revelation to you is not something strange or unexpected. I had sent revelation to Noah and to the prophets who came after him. I sent revelation to Abraham and his two sons, Ishmael and Isaac, and to Jacob, the son of Isaac. And to the tribes, which refers to the prophets that were from the twelve tribes of the Israelites from the children of Jacob. I also gave David a book called the Psalms. I sent messengers whom I have mentioned to you in the Quran, and I also sent messengers whom I have not mentioned to you in the Quran for a reason. And Allah spoke to Moses without an intermediary in a manner that befits him, as an honor to Moses. I sent messengers to give good news of a generous reward for those who have faith in Allah, and to warn those who disbelieve in him of a painful punishment. So that people will not have any argument to present as an excuse against me after I have sent the messengers. I am mighty in my dominion and wise in my decision. Surat An-Nisa, 163-165. A Muslim believes in, loves, and supports all prophets, without making any distinction between them.
Whoever disbelieves in one of them or curses or reviles him has indeed disbelieved in all of them. The best and most meritorious among them and the one with the highest rank in the sight of Allah Almighty is Muhammad, the final prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Fifth Pillar, Belief in the Last Day and that Allah Almighty will resurrect people from their graves and gather all of them on the day of judgment so as to hold them accountable for their deeds in worldly life. This revenge against the disbelievers will occur on the day of judgment. On the day that this earth will be exchanged for a barren and dustless earth and the skies will be exchanged for different skies. People will exit their graves with their bodies and deeds so that they can stand before Allah, who alone is the possessor and owner of kingdom and majesty. He subdues and is never subdued and he defeats and is never defeated. Surat Ibrahim, 48 When the sky will split apart because of the angels descending from it. When the stars fall one after the other and are scattered. When the seas are opened into one another and they emerge. When the soil of graves is turned over to resurrect the dead in them. At that time, every soul will know the actions it sent forward and those it left behind and did not do. Surat Alin Fita, 1-5 does the human who rejects the resurrection after death not ponder that I created him from semen, then he went through different phases until he was born and developed. Turning into an argumentative and quarreling creation? Does he not ponder over that to conclude that resurrection is possible? This disbeliever is heedless and ignorant when he uses decayed bones to prove the impossibility of resurrection, saying, Who will resurrect us, whilst having forgotten his own creation from non-existence? O Muhammad! Say to him in reply, whoever created these bones in the first place will bring them back to life, because the one who created them initially is not incapable of returning life to them. He, may he be glorified, is the knower of everything, nothing is hidden from him. The being who has made for you, O people, lush green trees from which you are able to extract fire by igniting them. So the being who combined two opposites, the moisture of the green trees and the fire ignited from them, is also capable of reviving the dead. Is not the one who created the heavens and the earth despite their grandeur, also capable of bringing the dead back to life, after causing their death? Of course, he is definitely capable of it, he is the creator who created all creations and he knows them all, so nothing is hidden from him. The authority and prestige of Allah is such that when he intends to create something, all he says to it is be, and so it happens as he intends it. His intending to give life, cause death, and resurrect is also like that. So Allah is glorified and free of the incapability the idolaters ascribe to him. He is the one to whom belongs total authority over everything and he does as he wishes with it. The keys to everything are in his hands and you shall all return to him in the hereafter, where he will requite you over your deeds. Surat Yasin, 77-83 I shall establish fair scales for the rising people to weigh their deeds with. On that day, no soul shall be wronged by having its good deeds decreased, or bad deeds increased. Even if the way deed is minute, like the weight equal to a mustard seed, shall include it. I myself am sufficient to take the deeds of my servants into account. Surat al 47 on that great day on which the earth will quake, the humans will come to of the place of reckoning in groups, to see the deeds they committed in the world. So whoever did a good or righteous deed equal to the weight of a small ant, will see it in front of him. And whoever did an evil deed equal to that, will see that in front of him also. Surat az 6-8 The gates of hellfire will be opened for those who deserve Allah's wrath and painful punishment, and the gates of paradise will be opened for the believers who act rightly and do good. The great horror of the hellfire when it surrounds its inhabitants shall not scare them, and the angels will welcome them with glad tidings, saying. This is your day that you were promised in the world, the one you were given glad tidings of receiving bounties in. On the day in which I shall roll up the heavens like the rolling up of a scroll, and congregate the creation in the state they were created in the first instance. I have promised that it will happen, a promise that there is no going back on. I shall indeed fulfill my promise. Surat al 103-104. The angels will drive those who rejected Allah to the fire in large crowds. When they will come to hell, the angels appointed as its keepers will open its doors and receive them with reproach by saying to them. Did not messengers from your kind come to you reciting to you the signs of your Lord that were revealed to them? And warning you of meeting the day of resurrection because of the severe punishment therein? 
the disbelievers will say in confession, indeed, that took place, but the word of punishment is binding on the disbelievers and we were disbelievers. It will be said to them, to further humiliate them and so they may lose all hope in Allah's mercy and ever coming out of the fire, enter the doors of fire to remain therein forever. How terrible and bad is the place of those who were proud and arrogant against the truth. The angels will gently lead those who were mindful of their Lord, by fulfilling his instructions and avoiding his prohibitions, to paradise in large crowds honored. When they will come to paradise its doors will be opened for them and the angels appointed to it will say to them, Peace be on you from every difficulty and from everything you dislike. Your hearts and your actions were pure, so enter paradise to remain there forever. The believers will say when they enter paradise, Praise be to Allah who was true to the promise that he made to us on the tongues of his messengers. He had promised to enter us into paradise. He has given us the land of paradise, in which we can live wherever we want to. How excellent is the reward of those who worked by doing righteous actions seeking the pleasure of their Lord. Surat Az-Zumar, 7174. Paradise has such bliss that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no human mind has ever imagined. So no one knows what things Allah has prepared for it in terms of bringing coolness and joy to the eyes, as a reward for the good deeds it would do in the world. It is a reward that no one except Allah can comprehend, due to its greatness. The one who believes in Allah, acts upon his commands and refrains from that which he is prohibited from, is not like the one who disobeys him. The two groups are not equal in terms of requital according to Allah. As for those who have faith in Allah and do good deeds, the reward prepared for them is gardens in which they shall remain as a mark of honor for them from Allah. A reward for the God deeds they used to do in the world. As for those who left the obedience of Allah by disbelief and committing sins, the abode prepared for them on the day of judgment is the hellfire in which they shall remain forever. Every time they attempt to come out of it, they will be returned to it, and it will be said to them, rebuking them, taste the punishment of the hellfire you used to deny in the world. When my messengers would warn you of it. Surat as Sajda, 17-20. The description of paradise, which Allah has promised those who are mindful of him, by fulfilling his instructions and avoiding his prohibitions, that he will make them enter is as follows. In it there are rivers of water whose smell and taste have not changed due to standing for long. In it there are rivers of milk whose taste has not changed. In it there are rivers of wine delicious to those who drink, and rivers of honey that has been purified from all impurities. Therein they will get all types of fruit that they wish for. Above all of that they will receive an obliteration of their sins from Allah, who will not take them to task for them. Can the person who has this recompense be equal to those who will remain in the fire never to come out, and who will be given extremely hot water to drink? Which will cut the intestines of their stomachs due to its extreme heat. Surat Muhammad, 15. Those who are mindful of their Lord by carrying out his commands and refraining from his prohibitions will be in gardens and a great pleasure which will never end. They will be enjoying the pleasures of food, drink and marriage that Allah will have given them, and their Lord, may he be glorified, protected them from the punishment of hell. Hence, they were successful through achieving their desired pleasures and by being protected from difficulties. It will be said to them, eat and drink of what your souls desire, in satisfaction without fearing harm or pain from what you eat and drink, as a reward for your excellent actions in the world. Reclining on adorned thrones which have been lined up, and I will marry them to fair women with beautiful wide eyes. Surat at 17 20. May Allah make us all among the dwellers of paradise. Sixth pillar, belief in destiny, the pleasant and unpleasant thereof, aspects, and that every movement in the universe is predestined by Allah Almighty. No calamity afflicts the people on earth, i.e., drought, etc., nor a personal calamity, except that it has been recorded in the preserved tablet before I created the creations. Indeed, that is easy for me. Surat al-Hadid, 22. I have created everything in existence with a prior determination from me, in accordance with my knowledge and what I had written in the preserved tablet. Surat al-Kamar, 49. O Messenger! Do you not know that Allah knows all that is in the heavens and on earth, nothing is hidden from him, and his knowledge of it is recorded in the preserved tablet? Encompassing the knowledge of it all is very easy for Allah. Surat al-Hajj, 70. Whoever believes in and properly fulfills these six pillars becomes one of the believing servants of Allah. People generally have varying degrees of faith, with some higher than others. The highest degree of faith is Isan, excellence, which is to worship Allah as if you could see him. 
If you cannot see him, he indeed sees you. Sahih al Bukhari 477. Those are the elite among people who will reach the highest ranks in paradise. In Al Firdaws. 6. The Teachings and Morality of Islam. A. The Commands. We will briefly present here some of the morals and ethics of Islam which it instills into the Muslim society. We derive them directly from the main sources of Islam, namely the Quran and the Prophet's hadiths. First, truthfulness of speech. Islam obliges its followers to speak the truth and considers the truthfulness of speech as an inseparable trait of Muslims that they can by no means give up. It strongly warns them against lying and seeks to alienate them from it using the most profound and clear terms. Allah Almighty says, O you who believe and follow the Messenger, act according to his sacred law, and be mindful of him, following what he instructs and staying away from what he has prohibited. And be with those who are true in their faith and in what they say and do, as there is no salvation except in truth. Surat at Torba, 119. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Adhere to truthfulness, for truthfulness leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise. A man will keep speaking the truth and striving to speak the truth until he is recorded with Allah as the most truthful. Beware of lying, for lying leads to wickedness and wickedness leads to hellfire. A man will keep telling lies and striving to tell lies until he is recorded with Allah as a liar. Sahih al-Bukhari 6094. Lying is not a trait of the believers, but of the hypocrites. 7. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, The signs of the hypocrite are three, when he speaks, he lies, when he makes a promise, he breaks it. And when he is entrusted with something he betrays the trust. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The hypocrite is the one who displays Islam, but in his heart, he does not embrace Islam or believe in it. Hence, the noble companions assumed the trait of truthfulness so much that one of them said, We did not know telling lies during the Prophet's lifetime. Second, fulfillment of trusts, promises, and covenants, and acting justly among people. Allah Almighty says, Do not transact in the property of a child whose father has passed away, except in his best interests such as investing or preserving it until he reaches the age of mental and prudential maturity. Fulfill any pledge between yourselves and Allah, or between yourselves and his servants, without breaking or falling short in them. Allah will question the one who made a pledge on the day of judgment. Did he fulfill it, in which case he will reward him, or did he not fulfill it, in which case he will punish him? Give full measure when you measure for others and do not cheat them. Weigh with an accurate scale that does not diminish or undervalue anything. That giving of full weight and measure is better for you in this world and the hereafter, than giving short measure or weight. Surat al-Isra, 34-35 Praising the believers, Allah Almighty says, those who respond to Allah are the ones who fulfill the pledges they made to Allah or the pledges they made to his servants and who do not break the pledges made with Allah or with others. Surat Arad, 20. Third, being humble and refraining from arrogance. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was the most humble among people. He would sit among his companions like one of them and hate that people should stand for him when he arrived at a place. A person needing something would take him by the hand and walk together, and the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, would not turn him down, rather, he would fulfill his need. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, instructed people to be modest, saying, Indeed, Allah has revealed to me that you should humble yourselves to one another. One should neither hold himself above another nor transgress against another. Narrated by Muslim, 17200, the Book of Paradise, chapter, traits by which the people of Paradise are recognized. Fourth, generosity and spending in charitable causes. Allah Almighty says, O Prophet, you are not responsible for making them believe in the truth and submitting to it, your duty is to guide them to the truth and explain it to them. It is only Allah who can bring them to the truth, and he guides whomever he wishes. The benefit of any good you spend comes back to you, Allah is in no need of it. So, let your spending be only for Allah's sake, true believers spend only for Allah's pleasure. You will receive the full reward for any good you spend, no matter how little, because Allah does not wrong anyone. Surat al-Baqarah, 272 Allah praises the believers saying, They also feed food, despite being in the state of loving food due to being needy and desirous of it.
They feed it to the poor, orphans and captives. Surat Alan Sun, 8. Generosity was a trait of the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, and of the believers who follow his example. He would always give all the money he had in charity. Jabir, one of the Prophet's companions, said, less than. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was never asked anything and said no. He urged people to honor guests, saying, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should honor his guest, whoever believes in Allah and the last day should maintain his kinship ties, and whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak good or keep silent. Sahih al-Bukhari 6138